Jupiter and Night is presented before a live internet audience. Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. I'm Alan. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Oh, my goodness, look who's back. Hi. Well, look who's... Well, you were on the first beta episode of Jupiter at Night. Yes, if anyone watched. That was like years ago. Yeah, it felt like, like two years yeah. ago on the internet time. It was I, 300 episodes ago, if I remember I don't even know correctly. what has gone on since in anything. Well, well what we launched a show. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay. And now what we do is we pick stories that are interesting to us and we talk about them. Now, this, today's <laughs> episode is going to be all about people that have found things. Those things, money. Crazy ways, crazy situations people have found money. Mm-hmm. Before we go, though, we figured you just went... You just went to Alaska. You were fishing. You yep. must have had some interesting Did you ever pull story. up like a fish that was filled with solid gold or something like that? No, we try. Um, <laughs> we try. <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, when you're out to sea is if you find one of those crates, those big uh, cargo crates, if you find it and it's floating, it's yours. But I've heard no stories of it. Really? That. No. It could probably just be junk in there anyways. I don't Old know. You could, you could find, you know, some slaves in there. Maybe oh, maybe handy. some some cars or motorbikes. That'd be nice. Like Those are always handy. Full of So chips. what you're saying is, is there's a there's a small chance that you'll find something good, so... Go I think a lot of people just tell that to their crew to get them to actually pay attention at night <laughs> and not fall asleep. I think that's one of the main things. But I don't know. I is gotcha. it kind of boring out there on the boat? It definitely can. You ever can. do anything to pass the time? That you do nothing but things to pass the time. <laughs> and most, most of them would have to be censored at best. Um, a yeah. lot of a lot of guy humor going on on the boat. I now, will say that. We're gonna have a stories. We're gonna have stories about people that found some crazy stuff. But before the show, we were kind of all just shooting the ass, talking about stuff we found. And I think you had a pretty great story about uh, a little like message in a bottle attempt. I, I didn't find it, but I caused someone else to find a message in a bottle. Um, this was on one of your previous fishing Yeah, trips, I've like been going on boats, like commercial fishing boats, since I was like fourth grade. So a lot of, lot of time spent up there, a lot of time bored. <laughs> and I didn't want to just throw it into the ocean and just like, hey, I hope someone finds it. So I cheated, got a little ginseng bottle, glued it all up. I like and, it. And... Um, Pretty much shoved it in the fish. Right in that fish. Right, just, just right in there. And, and I like your nice thought here. You're, you were talking about your process of logic. You're like, well, I figure if I just stuff it right in the fish and it's going to a treatment plant, if or it's a going to the, whatever. Yeah, if it's going to the cannery to get processed, yeah. it's going to get found. Yeah. So threw it in the hatch Skip that we sell it to. And nice. Yeah, I guess. Uh, did they find it? They did. There was, a, there was a cannery worker that found it. And I guess it was a big deal in the local newspaper. Like, you know, really? messaging the bottle found and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and even even at that young of age, I felt bad. So I'm like, just so you know, this is how it really went down. It was like a big thing for the town. Yeah, yeah, That's it was hilarious. pretty exciting, you know. I'm so you just gave them like your contact info, and they yeah, sent just you my a letter. name and address, and the guy sent me a bunch of letters, and we kept in contact for a while, and then I probably got bored and forgot yeah, about it. Yeah. I had a situation. That I'm happens that. when you're a kid. Should I'm we, sure I'm the one that ended contact. But with imagine that one. <laughs> how excited he was for finding a bottle oh, and yeah. a fish. Oh yeah. yeah, he was he was a little celebrity there for a bit. I'm sure he didn't tell anyone. <laughs> now imagine, say you go and maybe you pick yourself up a metal detector or something like that. You right? see those That's guys on the beach fun. all the time. You never yeah. find. You think those guys never find anything, right? This dude. Not judging by the way they dress. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. This one guy found a million in Roman coins. What does that mean? A million dollars in Roman coins? Is that I, like? But if the picture, if the picture is any judge, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot. Fifty-two thousand. They don't look of the highest quality to me. I don't. Well, know. they've been in the ground for quite a while. They've um, been in that pot since about two hundred fifty-three. Oh, p- yeah. I kept thinking, why the hell did they bury it in an egg? <laughs> no, it's like a storage <laughs> container almost. They think this was buried from in like two hundred fifty-three, maybe two ninety-three A.D. Wow. Maybe yeah. there might be as many as 700 of them scattered throughout the land. Little eggs full of monies? Yeah. Now, see, the thing about this, though, is that you're talking about beaches. And I've heard yeah. that most of the times you don't find anything at the beach. Well, all, all, the, all the money's found in, like, uh, the farms and stuff where, it, you know, like yeah. Civil War times, a yeah. guy mm-hmm. found some in the field. Like a watch or a gun. This one actually or, was yeah. found on a, a farm. A lot of times coins, though, I guess. Oh, it was on a farm? Yeah, the dude yeah. that found it said he had to split it with the farmer whose land he found it on. Did he have to oh. or did he choose to? Uh... I don't know. He said he did. (laughs) Let's just avoid any arguments. Here's half. It was just just easy. It was a million dollar value. Yeah, they split it, so he got five hundred thousand dollars. Can you still just digging up five hundred thousand bucks though? It's not bad. That's not bad. Based on that thing though, I wonder how far down he did have to dig. Because that seems like a good sized hole. It does. I wonder if he had like one hell of a metal detector. 
like yeah, hooked like, up to a backhoe like or something. What kind of brand? Because I bet he could get a sponsorship <laughs> with that thing. You know exactly. That would be funny. Yeah, let's do. Let's talk. Uh, <laughs> sp- speaking of finding things that you would not think of have any kind of value, uh, did you guys see this one? This guy bought some pictures for forty five dollars, and it turned out they were some lost Ansel Adams negatives. Oh, I worth love two, Ansel Adams. Two hundred million. Don't know a goddamn thing about <laughs> Ansel. Adams. We talked about this before the show. I'm the only one that's ever heard of the dude, and even I don't know much about well, him. So I guess he's a pretty famous photographer. And they, they assumed that like, these negatives had been completely lost, maybe like in a fire or something like that? Mm-hmm. He had his whole studio, his, whole his dark room, burned down in the 30s. Oh, yeah, 1937. Yeah. They thought they lost five. <laughs> he was very artistic, I yeah. bet. <laughs> yeah, he needed <laughs> uh, 5,000 plates they thought were lost. Wow. And the, um, the part of the story that I find interesting is the guy that bought them at the garage sale. He went to the garage sale, and the, the box of negatives was marked for 70 bucks. <laughs> and he, po- he would talk the guy down to 45 Yeah, he hey, th- <laughs> now they're, 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 just, they're just worthless plates. You know? There right. were $200 million to collectors. Well, okay, estimated. but at the same time, what kind of garage sale person sells a box of plates that they don't want for $70? That's high. That's, yeah. that's garage sale he robbery deserved right to be there. That is true. To. But I, I do hope that if the guy sells the plates, he goes back to the dude that sold them and at least gives him the extra 25 bucks yeah yeah that's the nice that might be just a slap in the face you know like (laughs) i know where you live i know exactly where this money should be but here's your 25 dollars just take it don't even worry about it well now shifting gears from finding stuff in uh uh, like garage sales Mm -hmm. this other guy we're going to talk about today he found stuff in, in a painting that he bought at an auction the stuff he found $4,800 $4,800 worth of pot. Nice. In the painting, like in the back of the painting. Now, when we were doing our pre-show prep, I was trying to visualize how much weed $4,800 would be. And uh, we discussed it with some of our expert sources. That yeah. We, we have exclusive access to here yeah. at Jupiter at Night. Uh, people that are involved exclusively in the Wayne weed industry, experts <laughs> in their field. <laughs> <laughs> tell us that they expect to be around one uh, uh, forty eight hundred dollars to be around a pound of marijuana. Which, if you like vacuum pack that down, it's probably That's only like a like a small brick. But yeah, if I mean, you're I'm put, sure you could flatten it inside, yeah. you know, pretty well. And like inside, you know, just having, inside yeah. the uh, what you call it? So painting. probably only like a an inch. Because I was thinking, like in a painting. What is yeah. It like? But also, some of the paintings, their frames can be very big as well. Yeah. You know, you yeah. don't always have just like a That's really true. thin Sometimes against they're the gaudy, wall. like. Yeah, they're yeah. just huge. And a $4,800. Uh, oh, 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 also, uh, I think uh, he was planning to either resell it or he bought it for like around $25. Yeah. It was one of these, another one of these it super he, crazy he, cheap. He had planned to ask $25 for the piece. Okay. So maybe he was trying to sell it at a restaurant or something. Yeah. But, uh, another garage sale. So this guy, he's 80, he's 80 years old, and he didn't have any interest in the marijuana, so he, he turned it in. Um, he's one of the number one people that probably should be using and it. We don't have it in this story so that, we, uh, that we put in our show notes, but I think somebody else was looking at a, another article on the same thing, that he got a small reward from the police department. Oh, he did? It was like 50 bucks or something. Oh. <laughs> Hey, they we'll gotta buy they all that stuff of off you for fifty bucks, face, man. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a good deal. Don't worry. No, that's that's way above street value. Here you go, citizen. We'll cut it in half. And uh, <laughs> you no, know, what he needs to do if uh, if he wanted to hang on to that uh, weed, he should go live in uh, Oakland. Oakland just passed legislation to allow large scale marijuana production. Woo-hoo! Like large scale industrial, industrial scale marijuana growing that, for, medicinal, for purposes. medicinal purposes. We just used industrial and marijuana in the same sentence. This doesn't feel like it's like the, the school we grew up I know in where we had to go to Dare and all those kinds of things. <laughs> I know this is a phrase I use a lot on this show, but we live in the future, guys. We are living in the future. Yeah. This is pretty wild. This is the the way that I think uh, marijuana usage is going, and I, I it just we'll finally coming it around full circle. We'll see yeah. it legalized within it used our to lifetime. Be completely I, legal. I swear. Everyone just looked down upon it. The beautiful city of Oakland. There you have it now they're going to oh, be just gorgeous they're going to be uh look the at, look at that the <laughs> proud owners of Alan? uh commercial uh, marijuana become a farmer <laughs> 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 well that's just it right i mean i i was kind of kidding before the show but it seems like if you have an area that's economically been struck pretty hard this is a pretty great crop they could grow and sell to the medical industry for a lot of money you know related to this uh this little thing that they pass that allows for the farms to use it. Yeah. Oakland has also already passed tax laws. Once so, once California or the federal government or both allow the the public use of marijuana, yeah. they already have the tax laws in place for it. 
there in Oakland. So are the tax laws, because I know there, are, there also is always the route of medical marijuana, mm-hmm. so they already have an infrastructure in place to tax it like you tax cigarettes and alcohol. Yeah, I mean, hmm. it does. Washington, our own state, Washington State, has talked about that. Yep. For our, because we have a budget deficit, and we've we talked about it on and off, but I think it's off the books now, and I know California's gone back and forth from going from just prescription to completely legalized. Oh, yeah. So it's it definitely does seem to be happening in all these different states all over the place, and you have to wonder... I, I would have thought, like, uh, yesterday we talked about they made some huge changes to copyright law and stuff like that, where it's now, yeah, like, I legal to back up your DVDs. I stuff. never thought that would have passed at a federal level, so maybe some marijuana law reform might. Who knows? You never know. It just it makes sense tax-wise, because everything that they've projected that I've always read is, you know, at the most, with taxes on that, it would because you're not fighting it anymore, mm-hmm. and you're getting money from it. Right. It would pay off most deficits in, like, two years. Mm-hmm. I thought it was funny. Which one of you guys was mentioning that they have a special provision uh, for these legalized industrial growing facilities that they have to have? Uh, a specific type of fire safety. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the main things they were checking on, on the, <laughs> well, the because, Oakland you know, Council. Because the first time I found about... Uh, legalized pot farms. I was thinking you can go just light the go field on fire. light the field on fire and have a good good time. <laughs> Stand back Invite and enjoy. Some friends and <laughs> now that sounds right. like a Jupiter night. We should be live right there. <laughs> Coming at you live. <laughs> That's right. All right, everyone. Well, I think that just about wraps up this episode of Jupiter Night, right, guys? Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're out every night Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific live, and then we release for download about an hour or so after that and you can get in all various formats over at jupiterbroadcasting.com and also if you're interested in sort of the government conspiracy angle of news stories UFOs those types of things be sure to check out Brian Lunduk's Jupiter Files that's live every morning over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live 7 a.m. Pacific 7 a.m. 7 early. in the morning and you know you cool. might you might uh, find it that it makes for a great commute companion if you have one of them fancy smartphones with the Ustream uh, app on there our uh, our live stream is featured on there, and you can listen to London Files while you drive to work. Whoa. Enjoyable. All right, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow night with an all-new episode of Jupiter at Night. See you later. Bye.